Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Lisa, if we haven't already met. Welcome to class today. Thanks for taking time for yourself. When you're ready, coming into a comfortable seat, whether you want to sit on a blanket or a bolster, or maybe on your heels and Varasana, whatever feels best in your body. Coming into a comfortable seat when you're ready. Closing your eyes if you'd like. Giving your shoulders a nice roll back a few times. And then forward. And then coming back to your neutral position. Relaxing your jaw and your forehead. Finding some deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and exhaling out the mouth or the nose. Whatever feels more natural. After a few breaths, bring the right ear over to the right shoulder. Pausing here, taking a deep breath in and exhaling. Rolling the chin down through the chest, bring the left ear over to the left shoulder. Pausing here, taking a deep breath in and exhaling. Rolling the chin back down through the center, right ear back over to the right shoulder. Head back to its natural upright position. Rolling the shoulders back a few times and forward. And once again, finding your comfortable seat. If you'd like to set an intention for this morning's practice or just put a special thought out in the universe. And then if you'd like to join me in one ohm to open our practice together today, or you can just listen. Deep breath in through the nose. Nice, opening your eyes when you're ready. We'll begin on our backs this morning. Coming down to a neutral spine, keeping the knees bent, feet planted on the mat. Head is looking straight up towards the ceiling in a neutral position. I'm just starting my music, I'm not texting, don't worry. <laughs> just starting my playlist here. And here we go. So really grounding down into your mat if you want to arch and concave your spine a few times, maybe wiggling your hips side to side, really planting down through the soles of your feet. And we're going to begin our cat cow breathing, but on our backs. As we inhale, we're going to draw our belly button towards our spine, lifting our hips up slightly, taking a deep breath in. As we exhale, we're going to lift our belly buttons towards the ceiling, exhaling like we're fogging up a mirror. <sighs> Inhaling, drawing the belly button towards the mat. Exhaling, lifting your spine up towards the ceiling, fogging up that mirror. <sighs> Taking a few more breaths, inhale. And exhale. And a few more on your own count.
After your last foggy mirror exhale, coming back to a neutral spine, feet about hips width, really grounding down, feeling your toes and your heels. From here, we're gonna use our right knee to gently press our left knee to the left. With the assistance of our left hand, we're gonna gently overlap our right knee over the left and let our legs, knees bent, slide over to our left side. Trying to keep both shoulders on the mat and then turning to face that right hand. Breathing. On your next exhale, we're gonna bend that right knee, gently allowing ourselves to come back to our neutral spine, placing our right foot on the mat alongside our left, adjusting if you need to, maybe giving your hips a little wiggle, coming back to center. From here, we're gonna use our right hand to gently encourage our left leg up and we're gonna slowly draw our knees over to our right. Trying to keep both shoulders on the mat if we're able and turning to face that left hand if that feels okay in the neck. If it feels more comfortable to stagger your knees or maybe using your right hand to press that left thigh down. We don't wanna go too deep yet. We're just warming up and just acknowledging all of our joints, muscles, few breaths here. On an inhale, lifting up that left knee as we exhale, coming back to our neutral spine, both feet planted on the mat. Drawing your knees into your chest, wrapping your arms on the outsides of your legs, gently walking side to side, maybe in a circular motion in one direction and then the other, and then coming back to center. From here, we're gonna draw our knees towards our right, gently rolling towards our right side, using our left hand and then our right hand to make our way to hands and knees. Coming to table pose. From here, big toes touching, knees open, sitting back on the heels, arms extended long, forehead to the mat. Taking some deep breaths here. Remembering we can always come back to this child's pose anytime during today's practice. If we're feeling lightheaded or dizzy or need a little break, it's always available. On an inhale, coming up to hands and knees. Exhaling tabletop. From here, we're gonna extend our right leg out behind us, tucking the right toes under on the mat or the floor, pressing back with that right heel. Next, the left arm comes out, left bicep next to the left ear. Staying here or maybe elevating the right leg off the mat, flexing right foot, hips in line, Drawing and strong through your root, your pelvic floor. And then we're just gonna hold here for a few breaths if you're able. If you wanna try to lengthen, pressing through that right heel, reaching through the left fingers. And then as you exhale, bringing that left hand down, right knee down, back to tabletop. If you wanna wag your hips side to side a few times. And then coming back to center. 
From here, we're gonna extend our left leg out behind, tucking our left toes under on the mat or the floor, pressing back with that left heel. Right arm comes out, right bicep next to the right ear. Staying here or maybe elevating that left leg off the mat. Flexing left foot, hips in line. Drawing in strong through your root, your pelvic floor. And then staying here if that feels enough or if you wanna try pressing, extending that left leg behind, reaching forward with those right fingers. All while engaging your root, your pelvic floor. And breathing. And then bringing that right hand down, left knee down, back to hands and knees. Toes touching, knees open, sitting back on the heels, arms extended long, forehead to the mat. Keeping in mind, you can always come back to this child's pose. It's always a resource for you. On an inhale, coming up to hands and knees. As we exhale, we're gonna tuck our toes under, lifting our knees off the mat, drawing our hips up and back to downward dog. Lifting up and back with the hips, attempting to get the heels on the mat, not mandatory. Feet are wider than hips width, big toes in line with one another. Thumbs are parallel. Hands are about shoulders distance, really Really grounding down through all your fingers, your knuckles, maybe giving the shoulders a nice roll back. So the insides of your elbows face one another. And then drawing back with the hips again, ears in line with the biceps. Maybe keeping a soft bend in your knees if you're feeling any pressure. Maybe gently shaking your head no side to side, relaxing the shoulders. And then lifting up and back with the hips again. Breathing. From here, we're gonna bring our right hand a few feet to meet our left hand. So right hand coming closer to the left hand. And then on an inhale, we're gonna step that right foot through coming into a 90 degree bend in that right knee. If we need to use our right hand to help our leg to get forward. And then we're either gonna pivot that left heel in or not, if it doesn't feel comfortable enough. So pivoting that left heel in or maybe not. And then with our right hand and then our left hand, we're gonna come up to standing. Hips facing forward, straight arms next to the ears. Warrior one right side. Grounding down through that left heel, lifting up through the right quad, relaxing the shoulders, active arms. Breathing. Inhale, as we exhale, we're gonna bring our right forearm to the top of our right thigh, reaching up and across with our left arm. Left arm reaching towards the right, left finger strong and active. If you wanna slightly open up your chest. Breathing. Inhaling, turning to face that right knee, exhale. Left hand comes down inside of the right foot, right hand comes down outside of the right foot, pivoting your left heel out, both hands planted. Right comes back to meet the left, top of push up or hands and knees, lifting the hips up and back to down dog. Finding your comfortable active dog pose. From here, we're gonna bring our left hand a few feet to our right. Inhaling, we're gonna step that left foot through, coming into a 90 degree bend in that left knee. Knee directly over the ankle. Right heel can pivot in or not. 
And then from here, we're gonna use our left hand on top of our left thigh and then our right hand. Maybe pivoting that right heel in, hips facing forward. Straight arms next to the ears, warrior one left side. Grounding down through that right heel, lifting up through the left quad, relaxing the shoulders, active fingers. Breathing. Inhale. As we exhale, we're gonna bring our left forearm to the top of our left thigh, reaching up and over with that right arm. Right arm reaching towards the left, opening up the chest. Sorry, my back is facing you. What did it get a new Lululemon top maybe? You noticed, just kidding. <laughs> reaching up and over with the right hand. Inhale, facing the mat, exhale, bringing that right hand down inside of the left foot, left hand down outside, left foot, pivoting your right heel out. Both hands planted, left comes back to meet the right, push up or hands and knees. If you wanna take a chaturanga or not. And then making your way back to down dog through hands and knees or child's pose, whatever feels best in your body. Breathing. Bringing that right hand slightly to the left, stepping that right foot through in a 90 degree bend. Pivoting that left heel in. This time we're gonna stand up forward facing. Hips facing forward, maybe slightly pivoting that left foot a little bit out to about nine o'clock. Stronger bend in that right knee, hips facing forward, arms extended long. Relaxing the shoulders while you draw them away. And then glancing over that right middle finger, maybe stronger bend in that right knee, maybe stepping that left foot back slightly. Breathing. Inhale, straightening that right knee. Exhale, pivoting your hips towards your left. Reaching forward with the right arm, either to the calf, ankle, or maybe a block on either side of the right foot. Left arm reaching up towards the ceiling, opening the shoulders, gazing inside that left palm, or keeping your gaze down towards the mat. Maybe keeping a soft bend in that front right knee if you're feeling any pressure. Engage in your root, your pelvic floor, as you breathe. Inhale, coming back up. Exhale, bending that right knee through warrior two once again. And then straightening that right knee, we're gonna turn those right toes forward, bringing our hands to our hips, bring both of our heels in. So our toes are at about a 60 degree angle, bending the knees if you need to bring your feet a little closer. Inhale, rolling the shoulders back, exhaling. Bring the hands to the inside of the thigh. Inhaling, bringing the shoulders to the ears. Exhaling, drawing that chest down, leading with the heart. Inhale, shoulders to the ears, belly button to the spine. Exhale, lowering, leading with your heart. Inhale. Exhale. And taking a few more breaths on your own count. On your next inhale, 
staying up, turning your toes to face forward. We're gonna bring our fingertips down in front of us. We're just gonna walk our hands out as far as feels comfortable, coming into an exaggerated kind of two wide downward dog, just to stretch in case we over acknowledged any of our joints just to kind of come back. You wanna give a little twist and then walking our hands back. Staying here for a breath if you're feeling a little lightheaded, slight bend in the knees, hands to the top of the thighs, inhale, leading with your spine, exhale, shoulders back, heart forward. Since we're facing forward, turning our left toes to face our left, we're gonna step that right foot back as far as feels safe, bending that left knee, hips facing forward, arms extended out wide coming into a warrior two hip bones should be facing forward and it's re settling stronger bend in that left knee arms drawing away from each other gazing over that left middle finger On an inhale, straighten that left knee, exhale, pivoting your hips towards your right, reaching forward with the left arm, either to the calf, ankle, foot, maybe a block on either side of the left foot, right arm reaching up towards your ceiling, opening the shoulders, gazing inside that right palm, or keeping your gaze down towards the mat. Maybe keeping a slight bend in that front left knee, lifting up through your root, your pelvic floor as you breathe. Inhale, bending that left knee, coming back up, arms extended wide, turning your toes forward. You should have already exhaled, but if not, bringing your hands to your hips, walking your heels and your toes and your heels. And then we're gonna bend those knees again. Toes are both facing outward at about a nine o'clock and a three o'clock. Grounding down through the heels. If you want to go a little wider. And then inhale, leading with your heart. Hands to the inner thigh. Exhale, drawing your spine towards the ceiling. Inhale, chest. Exhale, spine. And then let's bring our right shoulder to the left knee our left shoulder to the right knee. I wanna take that a few times. And then one more inhale, lifting up, toes facing forward. Exhale, inhale up, hands together. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart in prayer. You want to move your feet a little closer coming into mountain pose big toes touching bending the knees inhale arms up exhale folding forward fingertips to the mat slight bend to the knees stepping back to plank or hands and knees optional chaturanga downward dog And then from here, bending the knees, walking, stepping, hopping, or floating to the top of the mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms by our sides. We're gonna do a few balancing poses. If you need to keep a chair or a wall close by, getting any supportive gear you might need. 
grounding down your feet, coming into your samastitihi, rolling your shoulders back, heart forward. We'll begin on your right leg. Right foot firmly planted, left toes tucking under, either staying here as a kickstand at the inner ankle, calf, or possibly upper thigh. Maybe not, we'll see how it goes, no pressure. Exactly where feels comfortable is the perfect right pose for you. Maybe one hand in front of your heart, maybe both. Focusing on a gaze either directly in front of you at eye level or about three feet in front of you on the floor can help you stay balanced. Keeping an even balance on that planted right foot. Lifting up through the center and then maybe one or both arms up and overhead. Not worrying if you sway or fall. Just knowing the ground is right there to catch you or your wall or your chair. If your arms are up and overhead, bringing your hands back together to prayer through the heart center. We're gonna bring that left knee forward facing, extending it with a straight leg, flexing the toes, opening our arms to a T. And we're gonna try to thread that left foot through our center. I'm gonna turn sideways because I'm tall and the wall's too close. <laughs> through our center all the way behind us to warrior three. Trying to keep our hips in line, arms can stay in a T or go alongside our ears. And then releasing left foot next to the right, arms by our sides, giving our hips a little shake, shaking our wrists out. If you wanna rotate your ankles one way and then the other, sometimes you might get a couple of cracks. And then coming back to your mountain pose, shoulders back, heart centered. Moving on to your left leg, left foot firmly planted, Right toes tucking under, either staying here as a kickstand at the inner ankle, calf or upper thigh. Maybe one hand in front of the heart, maybe both. Focusing on a gaze, either directly in front of you at eye level or about three feet in front of you on the floor. Keeping an even balance on that planted left foot between the big toe, pinky, and the heel. Lifting up through the center and then maybe one or both arms up and overhead. You may find one side's a little more difficult than the other. It's typical in most of our bodies to have a dominant side. Some of us are lucky and are ambidextrous and can use both sides just as easily. I'm lucky for them. <laughs> if our arms are up and overhead, bringing our hands back together to prayer through the heart center. Bringing that right knee forward facing, extending it with a straight leg, flexing the toes, opening our arms to a T, and we're gonna try to thread that right foot through our center, all the way behind us to warrior three. Arms can stay in a T or go alongside the ears. I'll turn once again to do a little more of an active warrior three. And then releasing left, right foot next to the left, arms by our sides, shaking the hips and the wrists, rolling your ankles, losing your mic maybe, <laughs> sorry. And then when you're ready, coming to the top of the mat, Big toes touching, bending the knees, inhale, arms up. Exhale, diving forward, slight bend to the knees, fingertips to the mat, stepping or hopping back to plank, or hands and knees, optional chaturanga. Downward dog. From here, we're gonna kick our right leg up towards 
And the ceiling pointing the right toes. We could all, I'm gonna turn the other way, pardon me. Right leg up towards the ceiling, pointing the right toes. We could always bring the left knee down to the mat if we need a little extra support. Bending that right knee, opening our hips towards the right side wall if that feels okay. Otherwise, hips can stay facing forward. Maybe giving that right knee a stir clockwise. And then counterclockwise. And then coming back to center. We're gonna draw the right knee through our center, hovering over the backs of our hands. Opening that right knee out into a 90, I'm sorry, into a figure four shape. Keeping our weight centered, resting that right foot down on the mat. And then sliding that left leg back to wherever feels like enough for you. Once you've arrived, relaxing the top of that left knee, top of the left foot. Maybe using your left hand to adjust your right foot keeping your weight centered, staying here with straight arms or maybe coming down to the forearms. You can place a block under that right hip if you'd like. And then you can even stack your fists, resting your forehead on the stack or on a block. Few more breaths here. On an inhale, straightening the arms, coming to flat palms, removing any blocks if you use them. As you exhale, rolling over to that right hip, swinging the left leg around, coming in the cross legged. Rolling forward, stepping back to hands and knees or plank. Optional chaturanga, downward dog. And then once you've all arrived to downward dog, we're gonna kick that same right leg up towards the ceiling, pointing the toes, bending that right knee, opening our hips and just giving it a stir clockwise and then counterclockwise just to bring blood flow back to that area that we cut off from taking pigeon on the right. And then bringing that right foot next to the left, coming back to our down dog. From here, we're gonna kick our left leg up towards the ceiling, pointing the left toes, we could always Come down to that right knee if we need a little extra support. Bending that left knee, opening our hips towards the left if that feels okay. Otherwise, hips can stay facing forward. Maybe giving the left knee a stir clockwise. And then counterclockwise. And then coming back to center. Drawing that left knee through our center, hovering over the backs of our hands, opening our left shin to a figure four, gently resting that left knee on the mat, keeping the weight centered, hips facing forward, sliding that right leg back as far as feels like enough. Once you've established that's enough for you, gently resting the top of the right knee, the only part of the right knee and the top of the right foot. Staying here with straight arms, or maybe coming down to the forearms. And you can use your right hand to slightly adjust that left foot if it feels like it could use just a slight adjustment. Staying here with straight arms or maybe stacking the fists, resting the forehead on the stack. Whatever feels best in your body.
few more breaths on this side. On your next inhale, straightening the arms, coming to flat palms, removing any blocks if you use them. As you exhale, slowly lower with that left hip, swinging the right leg around, making your way into cross-legged, rolling forward, gently stepping back to hands and knees or plank. Optional chaturanga, I'll do one. I think the last one we're offering in this class and then making your way back to down dog. Whew. Once we've come back to down dog, we're gonna once again, kick that left leg up towards the ceiling, pointing our left toes, bending that left knee, opening our hips towards the side, maybe giving that left knee a stir clockwise and then counterclockwise. Hips coming back to center, bringing that left foot down next to the right. From here, we're gonna step our right foot through our hands, coming into a 90 degree bend in that right knee. Knee directly over the ankle. Left toes can stay tucked under with the left knee elevated, or we can release the left knee on top of the left foot. Hands can stay on either side of the right foot or on blocks, or we can try bringing our hands to the top of the right thigh. Drawing the inner thighs towards one another, lifting up, facing forward. Breathing. And left knee can always come down to the mat if that feels more comfortable. And then choose to stay facing forward or we can take a twist, taking the left elbow to the outside of the right quad, hands together in prayer, twisting, gazing just past that right elbow or keeping your gaze down towards the mat. And left knee to the mat is always an option. If you've taken the twist, coming back to forward facing, one hand on each side of the right foot, releasing the left knee to the mat if you haven't already, top of the left foot, drawing your weight back, extending your right toes towards the ceiling, sitting back wherever feels like enough for you. Maybe all the way on that left heel, maybe hovering over that left knee is enough. Maybe reaching for your right foot feels good whatever feels best in your body. On an inhale, coming to the top of that left knee, exhale, rolling that right foot down a flat foot. Bring the right knee back to meet the left. Toes touching, sitting back on the heels, arms extended long, forehead to the mat. Inhaling up to hands and knees. As we exhale, tucking the toes under, knees off the mat, hips up and back to down dog. I'm gonna turn this way. From here, we're gonna step our left foot through our hands, coming into a 90 degree bend in that left knee. Knee over the ankle. Right toes can stay tucked under with the right knee elevated, or we can release the right knee on top of the right foot. Hands can stay on either side of the left foot or on blocks or we can try bringing our hands to the top of the left thigh, drawing the inner thighs towards one another, lifting up, facing forward, breathing. And right knee can always come down to the mat if that feels more supportive. 
and then choosing to stay forward facing or taking a twist, taking the right elbow to the outside of the left quad, hands together in prayer, twisting, gazing just past that left elbow or keeping our gaze down towards the mat. And right knee to the mat is always an option. If you've taken the twist, coming back to forward facing a one hand on each side of the left foot, releasing your right knee to the mat, top of the right foot, drawing your weight back, extending the left toes towards the ceiling, sitting back wherever feels like enough for you. I have an injury on my knee, so I'm hovering over my left knee. If that feels good, you can join me. If you have the ability to sit all the way in your right heel, if that feels comfortable. If you wanna reach for your left foot, some of us who are super flexible, this is a nice opportunity to practice your Hanumanasana, your splits, if that's something you can easily get into. We've definitely opened up our hips enough. And I should have suggested that on the other side too. So if you're someone that loves taking a splits, I would recommend starting on this side, Holding it for a few breaths, gently drawing your right knee in, extending your left toes. And then making your way to child's pose if you're in the splits and then taking the other side and then continuing with us when you're satisfied with both sides. If you're just hanging out in this forward fold with me on an inhale, coming to the top of that right knee, exhale, lowering that left foot down the flat foot Swinging the left knee back to meet the right. Toes touching, sitting back on the heels, arms extended long, forehead to the mat. Inhaling, coming up to hands and knees. As we exhale, drawing our shoulders a little more forward in the backs of our hands, walking our knees back slightly, bending the elbows, keeping them close to the rib cage, lowering all the way down to the belly. Once we've lowered all the way down, bringing one side of the cheek to the mat, arms long by our sides, flip flopping our feet a few times, giving our hips a wiggle rotating our wrists in one direction and then the other. And then just taking a few restful breaths here. On an inhale, facing forward, Exhaling, extending our arms long in front. We're gonna go through one limb at a time to practice. On an inhale, lifting up that right leg, pointing the right toes. Exhale, releasing. Next inhale, lifting up the left leg, pointing the left toes. Exhale, releasing. Inhaling, right arm reaching out, strong fingers. Exhale, releasing. Next inhale, left arm reaching out, strong fingers. Exhale, releasing. Now we're gonna go opposite limb. So left leg, right arm, left leg, right arm. And lowering. Right leg, left arm, right leg, left arm, and lowering. Now same side of the body, right leg, right arm, right leg, right arm, and lowering. Left leg, left arm, and lowering. Let's take a little break, bending the elbows, one hand on top of the other, one side of the cheek to the back of the hands. Taking a few restful breaths here, getting ourselves prepared to lift all four limbs at once. Mm -hmm. 
Inhale, facing forward. Exhaling, extending your arms long in front, taking one practice breath in. Exhaling, next breath in, lifting all four limbs off the mat at once. Really drawing in strong through your root, drawing your shoulders back, letting your heart soar through. Taking tiny sips of air, a little higher, a little higher, and releasing, lowering all the way down, one hand on top of the other, other side of the cheek to the back of the hands. From here, bending the knees, flexing the feet, the bottoms of the feet are parallel to the ceiling, facing forward. If you want a windshield wiper, your feet side to side. And then coming back to center, reaching back with your arms, either for your heels, ankles, toes, pant legs, attempting to grab something if nothing's there, whatever's available. And then choose to stay just like this. Or if you want to take it one step further, drawing your knees together, flexing your feet, using your feet to keep your hands and your hands to pull your feet, drawing your shoulders back, letting your heart shine through. One more breath in and releasing, letting your legs, arms, face, breath, flip flopping your feet, giving your hips a wiggle, rotating your wrists in one direction and then the other. And then just taking a few restful breaths here. From here, we're gonna place our hands under our shoulders, facing forward gently pressing ourselves up to hands and knees and slowly sitting back on our heels. From here, we're gonna roll over to our right hip, extending our legs in front of us, transitioning to our backs. If you wanna bend your knees and place your feet on the mat first, and then if... And stop. Sorry. It's okay, are we being recorded still? Um, no. But I'm not, what I'm saying right now is, okay. Um, I'm sorry if I was edgy before, I just, I could tell Frankie was disappointed and, and we haven't done anything all week. So he was like so excited for his play date, but I was not disappointed to see you. <laughs> I love you. Okay, I'm like, and you know, I get so nervous before class. Okay, only child, they love, you know, their play dates. All right, bringing the bottoms of your feet to the mat if that feels more comfortable. If you have a microphone, getting that out of the way so you don't lay on it. And then we're slowly gonna lower ourselves down to our backs, coming down to a neutral spine. Feet are about hips width apart, maybe slightly pigeon toeing your toes so your toes are a little more in than your heels. Being able to brush your heels with your fingertips is usually a good indication you're in a good spot, staring straight up towards the ceiling. Grounding down through the bottoms of the feet on an inhale, lifting up the hips. Exhaling, slightly drawing the inner thighs towards one another, pointing your knees forward. If you have a block available, you can place a block under your tailbone or your sacrum if that feels like enough. Or maybe even tucking one shoulder blade at a time and binding your hands beneath you if that feels comfortable or maybe none of those things, whatever feels best for your body. If you wanna try kicking one leg up towards the ceiling and putting that foot down and then kicking up the other leg, you can try playing around with that a few times. And then making sure both feet are planted on the mat, on an inhale, lifting up the hips, untucking your shoulders. As you exhale, slowly lowering one vertebra at a time all the way down to your neutral spine. Once you've arrived, gently windshield wipering your knees side to side. Coming back to center. Drawing your knees into your chest, wrapping your arms on the outsides of your legs, 
gently rocking side to side, maybe in a circular motion in one direction, and then the other. And then coming back to center, we're gonna to continue to hug the right knee into the chest, extending the left leg long and flat on the mat. Straightening that right leg up towards the ceiling, binding the fingers behind the right hamstring. Bending that right knee. With our left hand, we're gonna draw the right knee across the left side of the body. Trying to keep both shoulders on the mat and then turning to face that right hand. Maybe seeing if you're a little more flexible than the beginning of class since we've had this whole 45 minutes or so to open up and stretch. Maybe it's a little more easier to take this twist. It's not as tight or as achy. On an inhale, gently lifting up that right knee. Exhale, rolling back to neutral spine, hugging both knees into the chest, wrapping your arms around your legs, gently rocking side to side, maybe in a circular motion in one direction and then the other. And then coming back to center. Continuing to hug the left knee into the chest, extending the right leg long and flat on the mat. Straightening that left leg up towards the ceiling, binding the fingers behind the left hamstring, giving it a gentle press. And then bending that left knee with the right hand, drawing that left knee across the right side of the body, trying to keep both shoulders on the mat, and then turning to face your left hand. On an inhale, lifting up that left knee. Exhale, rolling back to your neutral spine, hugging both knees into the chest, wrapping your arms around your legs, giving yourself a nice hug, rocking side to side if you want to circulate on your spine and give your kidneys and your lower back another little acknowledgement, coming back to center. From here, bring your arms to the insides of your knees, grabbing the outsides of your feet. If you'd like to take a happy baby shape, maybe one leg at a time, baby, if that feels more comfortable, maybe double baby. Or if you wanna bring the soles of your feet together and take a Baudu Konasana or a butterfly shape. If you have it in your practice to take plow and you wanna extend your legs up and then gently let gravity bring them behind you with the aid of your core. And then wherever you are, gently begin to bring your heels to your backside, pressing your knees towards one another, wrapping your arms on the outsides of your legs. Bringing your heels to your backside, chin to your chest, forehead to your knees, giving yourself the tightest hug, pursing your lips, squeezing your eyes, taking tiny, tiny breaths or no breath at all. 
and then letting everything go. Legs long in front, arms long by your sides, flip flopping your feet, giving your hips a wiggle, rotating your wrists in one direction and then the other. Relaxing your jaw, your forehead. And then finally closing your eyes, making your way into Shavasana. Gently begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, bringing your breath back, bringing your awareness back. When you feel ready, slowly rolling over to your right or your left side, hanging out there for a few moments. Gently begin to flutter your eyes open and closed a few times. And then when you're ready, using your top hand to press yourself up and then your bottom hand to assist in making your way back into seated. And we'll close our practice together today. Once again, finding your comfortable seat for the beginning of class, closing your eyes if you'd like, finding your breath, that third eye gaze. Doing a quick check-in with your body, seeing how you're feeling now from the beginning of class, if anything shifted, and maybe taking a moment to acknowledge something or someone you're grateful for. And if you'd like to join me in one ohm to close our practice together today, or you can just listen. Deep breath in through the nose. Oh. The light we honor is the light in you. Namaste. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you.